Well, we're going to talk about aqueous misdirection, also called malignant glaucoma, sometimes called ciliary block glaucoma, has lots of names. It's a disorder that we typically see after incisional surgery for angle closure glaucoma. So remember that, incisional surgery for angle closure glaucoma, so those are usually hyperopic eyes. It can occur in people who are phacic, aphagic or pseudophagic. And it's been reported after other things like trauma or inflammation or even spontaneously, but I must say that I've not seen that. To me, it's something I think about when I go to the operating room to do a trabeculectomy on somebody who's had an attack of angle closure. So the mechanism is really pretty unclear. We know that there is aqueous behind or within the vitreous. It drives the vitreous forward and compresses the anterior vitreous. And it seems as though this anterior vitreous has become relatively impermeable to aqueous. There are lots of theories about why that occurs. And in this theory, it has aqueous being shunted posteriorly, but we're really not 100% sure that that happens. And there are some theories that describe aqueous uh, transudating from behind. There are also theories about choroidal expansion. I think the thing to remember is that there is aqueous within and behind the vitreous and that the anterior vitreous becomes compressed and therefore becomes relatively impermeable. You can see that the anterior chamber is flat. It's not, there's no real central chamber in this patient. So compaction of the anterior hyloid. It's been called cilio-lenticular block. Um, some people wonder if there's anterior, anterior hyloid obstruction or lax zonules, choroidal expansion. I really don't think we know exactly what's going on in this disease. What we see is a diffusely shallow or flat anterior chamber. So you can see in the picture on the right here, there is a little tiny bit of an anterior chamber here but the iris is right up against the cornea. There's no iris bombay. The entire anterior chamber is, is shallow to flat. And the pressure is usually quite elevated, although it can be normal. This is just a patient with aqueous misdirection, just showing how diffusely shallow the chamber is. And then on gonioscopy, you can see the ciliary body here because the lens is so far forward. This is a patient who had very long standing aqueous misdirection, and his anterior chamber intraocular lens is actually embedded into his cornea. So you treat this with aqueous suppressants, beta blockers, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, alpha-2 agonists. You should avoid cholinergics like pilocarpine. That they tend to move the lens iris diaphragm forward, which is not helpful, obviously. Cycloplegia is a, a cornerstone of therapy, and you may need to use atropine indefinitely in these patients. So this is just a patient, again, with very, very shallow, diffusely shallow anterior chamber. And the, the movie is before and now after the use of atropine. So in this patient, it made a huge difference. Osmotic therapy, mannitol or glycerol uh, can be used to shrink the vitreous and, and really trying to shake up this deranged flow of fluid into the posterior segment. In the books, they say the medical therapy for five days is successful in up to 50% or more than 50%. That really hasn't been my experience. I don't think that it's as effective as that. One can also use the YAG laser to disrupt that compacted anterior hyloid. So these are a series of pictures. This picture is someone whose anterior chamber is completely collapsed. The pressure is very high. The cornea is clear because with the intraocular lens right against the cornea, there's no access for aqueous. 
and then the anterior hyoid is disrupted and immediately the chamber becomes deeper. And you can see that the cornea is still relatively clear, but as there's access of aqueous to this traumatized cornea, then it becomes cloudy and then over time clears again. The books describe vitreous tap. Uh, I have had very little uh, success with that. And really the definitive therapy is a pars plantar vitrectomy. And when the vitrectomy is done, one needs to go through the zonules, through the iris, into the anterior chamber and create a unicameral eye. And sometimes if somebody has had an attack of aqueous misdirection in one eye, I, I've had occasion to have the retina folks do a prophylactic pars plantar vitrectomy as we do a tube shunt or other surgeries in the fellow eye. It's useful to go through the differential diagnosis of a high intraocular pressure and a shallow anterior chamber in a post-operative patient. There are basically three things. Aqueous misdirection, which we just talked about, uniformly shallow or flat anterior chamber. Pupillary block you see less often in a post-operative patient, but in these patients the central chamber is deeper than the periphery and you can see here the iris bowed forward. And then a suprachoroidal hemorrhage which can also have a very diffusely flat or shallow anterior chamber. The thing that really sets them apart is pain. And then you can see the hemorrhage on either examination or in this case, on echography. The other thing to consider in your differential diagnosis of somebody who has a flat anterior chamber and you applinate them and get a very high pressure is that you're applinating the lens. And so whenever you see somebody like this, you need to reach around with your index finger and just touch the globe and make sure that the pressure is not zero because that's a little embarrassing to be working them up for aqueous misdirection when actually they're hypotenuse. So the key points, diffusely flat or shallow anterior chamber, usually after glaucoma surgery and eyes with angle closure. You treat these patients with cycloplegia, but the definitive therapy is a pars plantar vitrectomy and connecting the posterior and the anterior chambers together through that compacted hyaloid face.